at the end of the day, it's always, you kind of learn, you got to go and do it to be able to learn. And if it doesn't work out, well, you probably, that's when you learn out of your mistakes and your failures. So. Hello and welcome. You're listening to Dash Dot Insider, the auditory epicenter for passionate property investors seeking a life of freedom, choice, and abundance. I'm your host, Ali Rolleston, and joining me today is a very special guest, Cameron. Cameron is a Dash Dot client and has been building a portfolio spanning three states over the last couple of years. He's had an interesting journey to get here, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So, thank you for joining me this morning, Cameron. Um, why don't you kick us off and tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? What do you do for work? Um, yeah. There you go, Nelly. Um, yeah, so I'm a like contract fencer, yard builder uh, on cattle stations, um, currently in the Northern Territory uh, for work at the moment. So, but I travel, travel around a fair bit, spend a bit of time in Queensland. And, um, okay. Yeah. It's all West Australia. On the Northern side? What's that, sorry? Are you from the northern side? Uh, no, I grew up in Victoria originally. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, how did you get into property then? Ah, uh, good question. Well, I kind of figured it was a pretty good stepping stone into into buying a a farm or a station, I suppose. Um, okay. Kind of similar. It's all land, I suppose. At the end of the day, so I thought, well, might as well start there and work your way up slowly. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So, did you always know that you wanted to be a property investor to get there, or? Uh, not, uh, not really. I don't think it's one of those things you kind of stumble along on the way. And find, yeah, I've okay. always been interested in investing. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you like? Did you learn about property or investing growing up, or it's just something when you kind of came to your your adult years, you started researching a bit more? Yeah. Well. Well, I started off in shares and then, I don't know, the more Actually, research I did and the um, more I figured out, probably property seems to be a pretty good way to go about it, um, more leverage. And, yeah. But, I, yeah. Um, yeah, I just thought it was, I don't know, the land is kind of like a farm, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, okay. Right, so I had that kind of first connection then, like you, you sort of thought, okay, this is where I'm going, this is where I want to be, this kind of seems the right stepping stone and part to get me there. Yeah, yeah, I thought. Um, so I thought, oh, well, just buy a house and see how I go and go from there. Yeah. Cool. And and what was your plan when you first started um, buying real estate? Was it um, stuff local to you or? <laughs> yeah, I probably didn't really have a plan, to be honest. But um, yeah, I brought, brought a house, uh, 2017, didn't really have a plan. I just thought it was a good idea. Yeah, um, okay. Probably didn't really work out. But And then, yeah, and then I did some research after that, so... Uh, which probably isn't the best <laughs> okay. idea. Usually it's the other way around, but no, nah, then I'm, yep. yeah, look at buyers agents and, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so you bought the first one in 2017, did you say? Is that what you said? Yeah. I think 2016 or 17. Pretty sure it was 17. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And you were kind of doing it on your own. Um, was it a property that was in your own backyard? Did you? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, in rural South Australia and it was kind of near where my parents were. So I don't know. Oh, okay. Seemed like a good idea yeah. at the time, but probably. In hindsight, it wasn't, but yeah, that's the things you learn along the way, eh? Yeah, for sure. So I guess, yeah, wh- why did you make the decision to go there? Is it just sort of what you knew or was it land or, you know? Um, oh, I think it was just more local and, you know, someone can kind of half look after it for you. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. not really there, but yeah, now yeah. you realise you don't really need to be there. We'll see it at all, so. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You live in your land, don't you? So, um, okay, so South Australia is where you started. It was sort of familiar. Um, and what was your experience like buying the property? You said you did a bit of research afterwards, um, maybe not not as much going into it. Um, but what was your experience like buying it and then also holding it and, and being a property investor? Yeah, no, it was a bit of an experience, like the whole buying process. I didn't really, probably didn't really understand it at the time. Um, and then, yeah, they just brought it and, just held it for a few years and, um, no, but it was, um, yeah, but that was about, yeah, nothing too extreme, eh? Yeah, cool. So, um, held it for a few years. Did you make any money? Why did you decide to sell? Uh, I thought it was in the wrong, after I started doing a bit more research, probably figured it was in the wrong spot and then sold it, uh, the start of 2020, probably should have, looking back then, I should have held it, but anyway, um, 
one of those things, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, all right. So, did you make any money out of it? Uh, probably broke even, made a little bit, but not much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've had I've had properties in my portfolio like that too. Sometimes the mistakes are the good ones because they kind of this is where you sort of that's your platform and you start to learn. So that's cool. Um, okay, so held it for a couple of years, didn't really make money, but maybe you should have held on to it. Um, it sounds like it was in a bit of a flat period of the cycle and then maybe off after you got out. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably what happened. <laughs> that's all right. I think, I think that happens to a lot of people, to be honest. All right, cool. So that's property number one. So we're now in 2020. Um, then what happens? You've got out of real estate, haven't had the best experience, didn't kind of go where you wanted to. Um, but you've sort of understood and learned a little bit about why. Um, and it's next. Uh, and then I didn't really do much for a while. Um, and then I thought I'd better, better do something. Was that something? Were you scared off property, do you think? Or uh, were you no, just not really. I was just busy doing other things with work. And, um, yeah. Was it? And then, yeah, 2021. 20, when the, oh, I can't remember now. Yeah, 20, oh no, 22 and 2. Um, that period is a bit of a blur, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and then 2022, I was looking at buyers agents through that time and I was like, oh, probably should go and do something again. And um, yeah, came across you guys. And, well, I went. And then, and then began to grow. All right. So 2021, um, fast forward 2024, what does the property portfolio look like now? Uh, I think there's three, three properties in it. Um, yeah, one in Queensland. Western Australians just uh, settled on one in uh, South Australia. So, yeah. You just settled on another one. So, that is three in three years, roughly, depending when you um, Yeah, I think it's, yeah, two. Two. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, Did you oh, come- a bit, maybe. Yeah. How do you feel now? Three properties, couple of years. Is that where you want it to be? Um, yeah, it's all right, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I don't know. doesn't really change anything, to be honest, but. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Beautiful. Um, awesome. All right. So a bit of a journey to get to get to three. Um three different states. You've got quite a bit of diversity there. Um <clears throat> what what's the big sort of goal? Where are you where are you trying to get to? Why why are you doing all of this? Um, I'll eventually get a get a property um somewhere, like a station or a farm um down the track. It's kind of the, the main end goal, I suppose, the big one at the end. But, um, yeah, just, just keep adding to the portfolio as I go along. And, um, yeah. The plan on growing. Okay, cool. So when do you want the big farm? When is that happening? I'll probably give it 10 years, I would have thought. Uh, yes. Yeah, pretty- How old are you? Let me ask you. Uh, 30. 30. 30. Okay, amazing. So you would have been, you'd have been early 20s when you started then. Uh, I'm lobbing 23 or 4 or something. Yeah, 23. Yeah. Amazing. Brave. Young and young and brave. Well done. Okay, so cool. So 40. 40 is kind of when you're wanting to get that that big goal. Um, and where is where is the farm? Oh, I haven't I haven't thought that far ahead, to be honest. So I'll figure that a bit out when I get there, if I still want. You're going to make it first. Okay, yeah. cool. How much do you need, roughly? Do you know? Oh, I probably need a few million in... Usual equity to pull out and um, put into it, I suppose. Yeah. Nice. Well, three properties already. You're well on your way for that, for sure. Um, Ten years. Good good time break. Um, What do you... Did you say you're going to have cattle? Uh, yeah, hopefully it would be a cattle property. Yeah, not, not much in the sheep. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the end goal eventually. Yeah. Yeah, nuts. I wouldn't know the difference, to be honest. That's awesome. Um, Okay, so I'm picturing... Quite a large farm, nice green grass, beautiful cattle. Cameron sitting there, quite happy, living his life. Is that that the dream? Ah, uh, yeah. No, it sounds a bit easy. So probably probably won't work out that way and go draw something completely different. But yeah, you never know. You might you might get there at the end and it's not actually what you want. So you go do something else. Who knows? Who knows? Awesome. All right. So. To get there, to keep building, the, the plan is you're going to keep going. You've got three now, just settled on another one in the last couple of years. Um, plan is to continue to grow. Yeah, probably, um, yeah, another residential and then try and get us into some commercial um, just to help with cash flow. And, um, yeah, it might help the portfolio out a bit. Um, yeah, help with servicing and all the rest of it. 
Okay, cool. So your strategy with these three properties has been to sort of create growth, create that capital that you're going to need long term. And then maybe we're going to look at um, branching out, uh, maybe into some, com- some commercial and then creating cash flow. Is is your then longer term goal to start to look at retiring off the portfolio and having positive cash flow to support your lifestyle? Or uh, Maybe not retirement. I don't think I'd be able to retire. Um, but to kind of supplement your lifestyle, I suppose, and with your work and whatever else you do, um, to be able to live a bit more relaxed um, kind of life, I suppose. But yeah, I don't know about retirement. That's a bit a long way away. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, well, what do you your uh, What do your parents do? Are they are they retired? Have they been in cattle? You grew up on a farm. Uh yeah, I grew up on a property there, involved with like the wool industry, I suppose. Um, yeah, so I kind of grew up in the shearing sheds when I was younger. Uh, Don't like sheep now. No, nah, no, nah, definitely not. Traumatized as a kid. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, they. Oh, I sold the farm a few years ago, and um, yeah, but so not involved anymore. So big dreams kind of come from then. Um, is it sort of watching them growing up, or maybe people in your life, or this is just you knew from a young age that's what you wanted? Yeah, probably when I was younger. When you grow up on a property, it's kind of what you want, I suppose. Eventually, and it's uh, I don't know, it's hard, but it's. Um, there's value in it, I suppose, at the end of the day, because it is so difficult to get to it and, and to obtain. So, yeah, um, you'd rather you'd rather try and not get there than just not try at all, I suppose. Yeah, good on you. I like it. You're definitely a go-getter. Um, so what about the rest of the people in your life? Are they sort of on the property journey too? Is this something that you have, you know, that you sort of kick to yourself or? Uh, poor my brother is, yeah, he's, um, he's other dash dot client as well. He's done pretty well out of it um so far so he's yeah probably the only other one um, yeah nice it's nice to kind of have someone to share it with you in a way isn't it i think you know my experience property investing can be quite isolating sometimes if you sort of have to be careful um who about it all so that's really nice it must be um very special for your journey to be able to have someone on the same path with you yeah no it's good and he's kind of got the same goal at the end as well so it's um yeah good to be able to compare how we're going Nice. Awesome. And what do your parents think? Are they sort of, wow, property's a bit scary or were they sort of all on board and helping um, you out? I don't really talk sort of about it, to be honest. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's right. Hey, there's some people you talk to and some people you don't. I get that. Awesome. Cool. All right. So, been a few places, had a few experiences. A few more questions. Um, I guess, in my experience, there's can be some really scary parts about property and then there can be some absolutely exhilarating parts of being a property investor. What would you say was a scary part for you on your whole journey, you know, going back to 2027, 2020, 2017 to now, what's sort of the scary part for you or the uneasy part? Or are you just cool with the cucumber and float through? Uh, oh, most of the time I think I'm pretty cool and calm and collected about it. But uh, yeah, I think it's all pretty if you kind of don't really get emotionally attached to it, I suppose it's all pretty easy, eh? But, um, or not easy, but it's all. Do you reckon you were emotionally attached to your first purchase, but you're, as you've sort of grown, you're less emotionally attached or is it sort of been the same for you? Probably been the same, I think. I might have been a little bit more to the first one, but yeah, ever since then, I don't think emotion really comes into, into it at all. But, and you're not, not that you really know if you're going to do well out of that property or not until you actually go and, go and proceed with the purchase and, just go and do it, I suppose, eh? Timing's everything, hey? Yeah, yeah. Got to give it time. Cool. All right. Um, so there's nothing in particular that, that made you nervous, no scary part. I always find that when I go to, um, I bought a number of properties, but even nowadays when I go to sign a contract, I still, oh, oh, no, it's okay. I'm good. I've done my research. I know what I'm doing, but that's me. <laughs> yeah, no, um, not really. You, and at the end of the day, it's always, you kind of learn, you got to go and do it to be able to learn and if it doesn't work out, well, you're probably, that's when you learn out of your mistakes and your fails. So, I don't think it's. Exactly right. I think I'm probably most proud of some of the, never lost money in real estate, but similar to you, your experience, I sort of had some that have sort of sat flat. And I think they're, in some ways, some of the moments that I'm really proud of as an investor because it, it, it certainly has given me the opportunity to grow and learn. So, yeah. Cool. All right. What about the exhilarating part then? There's some pretty exciting parts. Or do you feel that the journey is kind of still going and... Yeah, I'd, 
I don't really get too excited about it, to be honest. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's all pretty straightforward. Eh? Maybe when you get a bit of, um, get some pre-approval, that's exciting sometimes. But apart, oh, you, you get some valuations back. That's usually pretty good. But yeah, <laughs> just, apart from that, it's not that doesn't really change your day-to-day life, to be honest. I don't think. Does it? Yeah, and do you know what? I think that's a really surprising part about it is that once you, it's all very intense while you're acquiring and you're growing. And then when you've got them, it's sort of like, well, I just want them to sit over there and be quiet and, you know, not make too much life, not make too much noise in my life. Cool. Awesome. So pre-approval is something that excites you. I think that says a lot about who you are as an investor um, because your pre-approval is effectively your chance and your opportunity to go again. So sounds like it's a keep growing and, and, and make this really big. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only time you really, all that kind of dictates what you can do, I suppose. So if you don't have that, you can't really do much. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It can be a bit of a um a process going for loans as well. Certainly in my experience it's been there's been some highs and some lows there as well. Yeah, very much. Uh, cool. Awesome. All right. I have um another question. So if you could cast your mind back to twenty seventeen, have a have a chat to the younger version of Cameron. Um you're twenty three, twenty four. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, yeah. Knowing what you know now, what is one piece of advice that you would give your younger self when you were starting out and about to jump into that South Australia property? Probably go do some more research um, and then, yeah, get some, get some professional help because it's not really when you're, when you're working remotely all the time, it's not, you're not really thinking about that kind of thing. So, or doing any research. So probably, um, yeah, go find a good buyer's agent and would have been a, a better way to do it, but. Cool. And what kind of research would you would you would you recommend to yourself? Like suburb research, buyers agent research, you said. Any particular? Yeah, probably suburb selection and then yeah, obviously your buyers agents come into it a lot as well and, and finance. Um, but just the whole the whole process kind of look at the whole process a bit more in depth rather than just kind of try and wing it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but uh, yeah, but Sometimes you get lucky too. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've certainly seen a bit of that happen as well. Um, awesome. So you started when you were 23. You're 30 now. The goal is 10 years' time to get to the big farm. It's been quite a journey. Definitely sounds like you've learned quite a bit along the way. Um, one last question. What does success look like for you? Is it where you are now? Is it where you're going? Oh, I don't think you ever really get success, do you? I don't know. I think it's just where you where you want to get to, but and that's always the goals. Goalposts are always moving. So, but there that I think success is just about being able to be the best person you can be. I suppose I don't know something like along those lines. I love that. Do you feel that being a property investor is helping you be the best version of yourself? Hopefully, it does. I don't know. It doesn't seem to change anything at the moment, but um, yeah. Well, you probably learned a bit, a bit more about finance and all the rest of it, property management and um, maintenance and the rest of it. But yeah, and that's the goal, right? That's where you're heading. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I love that. That's really powerful. Today has been uh, very enjoyable for me. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your story with us. Um, I'm really looking forward to continuing to follow your journey and seeing where you end up. I'm sort of picturing the future there. Like I said, really nice big farm, nice green grass, picture of a sour side and a very happy uh, 40-year-old Cameron who's changing up his life and probably moving the goalposts and, and there's going to be another goal for when you're 50. Yeah, probably. Uh, if I get there, yeah, who knows. But um, that's the, at the moment and the plans always seem to change, so. To be honest, having this conversation with you this morning, I don't think it's if you get there. I think really it's a matter of when you get there. So good for you. And congratulations on everything you've achieved so far. Um, you might not see it, see it, but uh, you know, you've, you've achieved more in your last couple of years than a lot of property investors ever do. So well done and congratulations. Much well, cheers. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for joining me. No, no worries.